Hello everyone, welcome to your own YouTube channel where we talk all about the gate exam and we are studying the operating system into that the CPU schedule and algorithm. In this video, we are going to understand in detail about round robin CPU schedule and algorithm, one of the very important CPU schedule and algorithm and the one which is used actually in the time sharing environments practically used there and yes it is found little complicated by students to understand and to implement in terms of questions so we'll see each and every bit about it now to understand the algorithm let me tell you the criteria over which this works so it works on the time quantum which is also known as a time slice so basically what happens is the cpu scheduler will will have a timer so i mean always uh, the implementation of round robin scheduling algorithm externally required an extra hardware that is a timer so that timer will get set with a value which could be anything so a time quantum could be two unit of uh, execution it could be one unit it could be three unit like three millisecond two millisecond whatever is a unit of execution on your cpu that will get set to it every time a process is given the execution on the cpu it runs for one time quantum and then get context switched from another process which again run for the next time quantum so it's actually going to work absolutely on the preemptive mode so uh, let me explain you this algorithm with the help of this question which was asked in the gate 1996 what the question says is that we have three uh, four process a b c d all are arriving at the time zero and their respective burst times are 4, 1, 8, 1. Now the question simply says that we make use of the round robin scheduling algorithm where the time quantum given is 1 unit. What is the completion time of process A? That is what the question is asked. So now in order to understand this algorithm, we have to have two things. One is the ready queue, which is very important because every time whichever process will be first in the ready queue will get the next chance. So we have to maintain the ready queue perfectly. Whatever is going to be the sequence of ready queue, that is exactly going to be the sequence of your GAN chart. So here is your ready queue and here I am going to make the CPU execution over the GAN chart at the time 0. So this is all over the time. Initially in my ready queue, because I have four process, so I have four process A, B, C and D and all of them are arriving so you can however you want. You can separate them like this also, it's up to you. Okay, however you want. It's in a basic manner you need to understand that how do we implement the ready queue actually. So initially, now you see, because the criteria is time quantum which is equal to one unit and we have all the four process at the same time available. So we have to schedule the very first process according to the ID, process ID. So yes, of course, we understand that A comes at first. So we schedule the process A at time zero. Now everyone, we know that it requires four burst, but because we can schedule only for one quantum, so that becomes from zero to one, it gets scheduled and its burst time becomes now three. Correct? Three. Now you see, it got finished only for one quantum. It is not yet done. It's not terminated. So that means it needs to go back into the ready queue. So that you need to understand once a process has completed here. And after that, if you don't have any other process coming in the ready queue, all have already come initially in this point. So after that, what you will do? You give a chance and you keep it back at the end of the queue because it needs to get execution again. It still demands the execution on the CPU. So we will keep it at the end of the queue. Now, whoever is in the line of the queue will get the schedule that first. So from here, I can easily see it's B. From here also, I can see it's B. So B. Now again, from 1 to 2, we cannot give more than that. But you see here, the process B needs only one quantum. So with this, it gets finished. It becomes 0, it becomes finished and it becomes finished. Once B has finished, you need not to keep it back in the ready queue furthermore. There is no requirement because it has finished, correct? So it actually go from uh, ready to running. From running, it going it's, it is going to the terminate state. That's all. Now, B is done. Next is C. So we should do C and of course, needless to say that one quantum at a time. So 2 to 3. Now C requires 8 burst, quite high. So it becomes 7 and it needs further execution so it gets cancelled from here and it goes furthermore so whichever process you finish here you will check whether it requires more execution if yes you will keep it at the end of the queue all the time so that is what is known as the 
maintaining of the reticule. Now, D. Let's give a chance to D. And whichever process you are picking, just make a cut to it so that you are clear that this part has been scheduled already. That's for the understanding. So D needs one burst again and we can give only one quantum. So this also becomes zero and this got finished. So D is ultimately finished just like B, it also got terminated. Now we just have to process A and C, but their requirements is quite larger, three and seven. So we have to keep them, scheduling them one after the another for one one time quantum. So let's take A, keep it back, four to five, two, now C, 5 to 6, you need to continue this, don't forget to write it there, so 5 to 6, okay, so this becomes 6, once again, now chance for A, so A is done, and 6 to 7, and how many bursts are uh, there, so it has become once again, one left, one more burst, so it needs one more burst, next is C, C, got it cut and it needed one burst we gave it one burst so seven to eight and it becomes five at any moment of time if you feel any confusion you can simply you know uh, stop and look at how many bursts you have allocated and how many were actually required so seven to eight have been c now we need a and a needs again one more burst and this becomes zero so we have actually finished with a and we, if you just want to be sure that yeah, it got four bus, you can check it is coming one, two, three, and four times, and every time it is given one time quantum. So yes, A has finished. Now you need not to write it back, but C is still needed. Okay, and C will now get a chance. Let's see. I'm continuing here. So C getting chance at nine and at ten. Okay, and it needs five burst. So it actually needs a continued. So now we know because no other process is there, so we will continue. So nine to 10, then 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 13, and how many it needed actually? Five, and lastly, 14, one, two, three, four, five. Somebody might be thinking, why are we giving all the five to encounter to C at the same time? Why? Because we don't have any other process. Rest all the process have got finished so now this is finally that we say c is also actually finished so now you have a complete gantt chart right available with you and the question is asking one simple thing then what is the completion time of a so completion time of a you need to see the end of the a so this is what the completion time of a so that is nine and if you can see the option the option is d nine time quantum or the nine units so this is the completion time of a if you want we can find out for everyone b is completing at 2 c completed at 14 and d finished at 4 so this is exactly what the completion time for each of the process is